Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Fetters versus Fetters. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Mr. Fetters, you say you're in the midst of a divorce because your soon-to-be ex-wife is a serial adulterer who even cheated on you on Valentine's Day, which you believe resulted in the birth of her nine-month-old son, Corbin. Yes, Your Honor. You say there is no way you are Corbin's father and would like your name removed from the birth certificate when that is proven. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Ms. Fetters, you say your husband is an irresponsible crybaby who can't keep a job, stay faithful, or please a woman. Yes, Your Honor. While you admit to making some mistakes, you say Mr. Fetters is undoubtedly Corbin's biological father and you intend to prove that today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Fetters, how did you end up in court? Well, today, Your Honor, I ended up in court because my wife is a cheater and I do not believe that, that the son correct. that she buried nine months ago is mine. So you are firm on that belief? Yes, Your Honor, I do. And so you say that she's a cheater? Yes. And how do you know that? Well, <clears throat> it all began when we first met at a water bowl. I thought I had met her at love at first sight. Up until the six-month mark, she <clears throat> had informed me that she had actually had slept with my family member. Oh! oh! Six months into your relationship, your girlfriend sleeps with your family member. Yes. And then you make her your wife? <laughs> Not until two and a half, three years later did I ask her to marry me. So, Ms. Fetters, did you sleep with the no, family member? No, I did member? not. Um, the family member and himself lack in a department, so I did not finish the duty. Oh. Nothing happened. Oh! He just thinks something happens. He has no hard facts or information, and when I do sleep with someone else, I tell him the truth. Well, Mr. Fetters, she says if she did it, she would tell you. I find that hard to believe because come as when he was conceived, I had to pry the information as to why she was wanting to leave me in the first place and come to find out she had actually slept with her ex-husband, Justin. And this was on Valen This is the day before Valentine's at midnight. We went to go see Fifty Shades of Grey. So we had a wonderful night. So, Miss she... Fetters, you have a date night. You go to yes. movies. Um, it was, it was a good night. We came home. Um, he didn't... See, I have a problem. In a relationship, I feel sex is a part of a relationship. Well, this man lacks on that part of a relationship. So the fact that I wasn't going to get it when I wanted it, um, I told was him case, what I was Honor, doing. He knew with me for eight years. what I was doing. I'm not a liar. I'm very, very honest. So when I left that night, he knew where I was because he tried to hunt me down but couldn't find me. So let's be completely honest. So wait a minute, you, would... you said... I'm going to Hold be on. with my ex-husband. No. That is what I said. Mm. And he knows. Before you left? Before I left. She did not, Your Honor. So wait, you go to the movies and have a good date night and by the end you're in the bed with your ex-husband? Yeah, he didn't want... He didn't want to that be sexually like active with me. So theme. I was over it. He gives it to other women, but he won't give it to me. Your Honor, I... You have never... sex with other women, but you won't have sex with your wife? She has no factual proof. I have never slept with any other woman outside of our relationship. When did she come back? She contacted me at 7.30 in the morning to let me know where she was at. So I came there with our two children at the time, and she had told me that she didn't want to be with me. So <clears throat> I had pleaded and begged her, you know, what, what is it that I need to do and what can I do to make this right? Uh, she tells me and persists to tell me nothing. I said, well, well, what happened last night to make you feel this way? She tells me that she had slept with her ex-husband, Justin. Not only once, but three times during the night. Oh, no, that's incorrect. That's not incorrect. That is very oh, factual. Oh, my goodness. Ms. Fetters, did you say that? No, I did not. What did you say? I told him that I spent the night with him. Was it protected sex? Nope. Um, he actually didn't completely... Finish. Complete. Okay, so he Complete, did not yes. finish the act. Correct. Something and you like admitted that. this to your husband. Correct. And he knew. And then I shortly after, yes, I got pregnant. Hold on. Before we get there, <laughs> Mr. Fetters, your wife tells you she slept with her ex. I loved her so much at the time that I was willing to forgive anything that she ever done just to be able to keep her and have her in my life. And so how soon after that did you start having sex with your wife again? 
uh, the, the next day. The next morning, actually. It was that, or not the next morning. I'm sorry. The next day. It was that morning of, Your Honor. We had no, sex. No, it was the three, very next day. It was about day. 11 o'clock that morning that we had sex after picking her up and her having sex with her ex-husband. Wait, did she... But she told you she had sex with her ex-husband. I understand that. And then you all go home and then you have sex with her the very next morning? That is correct. Just hours later? Yes. Knowing she had just slept with her ex-husband? And it was unprotected as well. What in the world? Mr. Fat... Yeah. Ms. Fetter, so it was just hours later? Yeah. I thought it was the next morning. It was, like, the very next morning. I came home at, like, 7 a.m., and then when we talked and then he persuaded me and I felt obligated, that's when it was, like, 11 a.m., almost noonish, and we did. There was no persuasion, Your Honor. She actually had felt bad. No, you persuaded me, and you begged me and pleaded and had tears. Constant tears. I've never had to beg and plead. Yes, you did. You just said you did. Always. So now this is the actual Valentine's Day. Yes, sir. I mean, what a 24 hour period. Man, (laughs) it's the crazy crazy. I don't even know why you all went to the movie. I mean, you all are making a movie. This is a full on movie. (laughs) This movie is called Fifty Shades of Messy. (laughs) If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So, how soon after this incident did you find out you were pregnant? Um, I found out, I would say, just like maybe a month later, a month and a half, I found out. And uh, the conception date was between February 11th to February 14th. They ah. gave you that window. So that's right there. Well, in yeah. the sweet spot. <laughs> yes, it is, Your Honor. Or sour spot, this is. <laughs> I don't even know. Wow. So the conception window pointed right to the date when you were with both men. You've been honest about it. Yes. And so, when you found out she was pregnant, Mr. Fetters, were you happy about it? Were you concerned? What, what, what did you feel? I was feel? very, very concerned for whether or not the fact that that child could possibly be mine. The reason being is because, like she said, she did tell me that she did have unprotected sex. Um, however, until today, she neglected to tell me that he didn't finish, which I find that very, very, very hard to believe. Because... Um, <laughs> You just don't, you just don't have relations and just don't finish. It's, well, let me clear that's, something that's, up for that's you. Because that's what she's sitting here, obviously complaining about me. Let me so clear something up for you. She goes to somebody you. else to do the same. My thing. marriage with him ended because he can't have children. A doctor told him his sperm count is too low to conceive. No, so no. did the doctor tell him he can't have it? Yes, it's a very low chance that he can have any children. Do you that's have why to? I want to. Very start low up. is different than can't. Right. Well, he doesn't Absolutely. have any yet, I so I, d- I don't know. I just don't think... Do you have the paperwork I'm approval? more than... No, I do not. Okay, I so... see now. We were together. All we were right. married at that time. So, Mr. Fetters, mm-hmm. when your wife gave birth, where were you? Did you show up? Did you participate? Were you there? Yeah, I was there every step of the way. I was there for pretty much majority of the appointments if I wasn't at work. Uh, I was there for skin-on-skin contact because the mother had to have a C-section. So I was there to hold him against my skin for the first two or three hours. So I developed a really tight bond with that child. And that makes you emotional when you look at him? (laughs) Very much so. What do you feel? If he is mine, I'll love him like my mama, like the rest of my children. But if he's not, that's not gonna be my responsibility. It's the other man's responsibility as a father and a man to raise his child. I have undeniable proof of why I believe he's yours. And what proof? Why do you believe it, Ms. Fetters? Because as the other children he has, and my son and himself all have cleft chins. It's hereditary. One parent has to carry that gene. I believe undeniably that is his son. I actually have research that I have done myself as well. So you're a doctor now. Can you hand that research up? (laughs) Jerome, may I have that, please? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. A cleft chin is a facial characteristic on a person's chin that is an indentation on the bottom of the chin or resembles a dimple. 
This is caused during the fetal development stage when the lower portion of the jaw doesn't completely fuse together. The cleft chin is a dominant trait, and a child with a cleft chin has inherited the gene from one parent or both parents. I do not have one. Your Honor, but the other possible potential father does have one. No, he does not. I mean, I don't... I don't really see where the dimple is in that picture, but there is, there is, there is dimples as far as, I mean, you could see mine distinctively, but that's a, that's a pretty old picture. I mean, and it's in black and white, so I, I honestly, to this day, I don't understand why she would in this point in time, if she believes that I was the full holy hearted father, why would she involve him at this time to say, hey, you might potentially be the father of Corbin now, instead of just leaving it between me and her. I had him she come around him. because I wanted him to come around and because that's my choice as an adult. I make my choices. Why would you bring another man and around? I can bring whoever I want around. Father. Justin, it doesn't mean anything. And tell him that he could possibly be the father. Well, I did not that tell makes him no that. no sense. Yes, you did. Whatever. You, you. So wait. <laughs> Why would he be around if you didn't? Because I want him around. <laughs> Isn't that my choice? Okay, that makes no sense. Okay. <laughs> this really doesn't make any sense. You know there's a question of paternity. Mm -hmm. You develop a relationship with the baby. Mm -hmm. You've been in Corbin's life. In and out. I have been in his life. I just got back from Florida a month ago due to a job opportunity that I had. I was down in Florida for four months. This is right after we had split up, I had left. So you've been there, but you don't think he's your biological child. Because as soon as I left for Florida, she started having Mr. Edmonds come around and see Corbin and... He was there to see me. But Why does have... it have to be about the baby? <laughs> if Can't be about me. Oh, but you have a boyfriend. Why would what you have I do man is my business. Who okay, I have so come there, to my home is my business. So, Miss Fetter, are you are father. you stating that <laughs> you are in fact back with your ex? Now? No, I am not stating that. Um, we are very close. We've known each other over ten years. I, we were high school sweethearts. We have a friendship. He does not come over for any sexual anything. He comes over to just see me. I've known okay. him for a really long time. So, are you in a relationship with somebody else? Yes, I'm in a committed, happy relationship. But she's having him come over while he's at work. He's there. <laughs> no, he's, he's been not. at work. <laughs> You've confided in me. He's been at work when he's came over. Okay, think what you want. And he's came over when Whatever. her boyfriend is there. <laughs> it's crazy, Your Honor. And she's living in our house still. My grandparents had bought the house for me and our family at the time, so that way we had a stable place and never had to worry about anything as far as losing it. All we had to do was pay the pretty much your basic bills, and that's it without having any rent. And so that way we would never have that. to worry about a place to live for the kids. I worked. I have eight years of tax returns that can prove it. She has no tax returns of income. She yeah, had I was never a had to work. Mom. Okay. And I did my job. You you did your job of sleeping yes, around. Yes, I did. <laughs> and you still do. Says the one that sleeps with everyone and can't own up to it. I mean... I do something wrong, I own up to it. We wouldn't be here if that was the case. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Okay. No, no not really. I've heard enough. Jerome, okay. the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we could be here for two more days and you all would still have stories. Mm. And, I mean, you're not even really that old. No. He makes you feel old. <sighs> it's too much. That's why the marriage is over. This is sad to see. Oh, when you have to financially yeah. support somebody that don't do nothing, I mean, it's kind of hard oh, for you. Okay. These results <laughs> were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Fetters versus Fetters, pertaining to whether Mr. Fetters or Mr. Edmondson is the father of nine-month-old Corbin Fetters, It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Fetters. <laughs> you are the father, sir. I'm very, very happy. I, I couldn't I have words, can't even describe the fact that I'm glad that he is mine. The doubt is... The doubt's gone. Gone. I mean, yeah. Yeah. We don't have to live with that anymore. As no. much as you all have been through and the process you're still going through as you, you know, are getting a divorce, it's, that's not easy. And at the end of the day, it affects children. Absolutely. And divorce on top of a paternity issue 
These two combined are a recipe for emotional instability, trauma for a child. Absolutely. And that's not what we want for no. Corbin. No. We don't. And you got to get to a better place when it comes to the way you operate with one another. Yeah. And the way you speak to one another. And I'm not talking about every conversation end up with, I can't stand you and you slept with so-and-so. Well, you did that. Every conversation just can't go there. But every conversation went there today. It, yeah. It has been, Your Honor. It but every stopped. conversation can't go there. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Because then we're never putting the children first. And I'm not saying this comes as second nature to anybody. I mean, when you're going through a divorce and you're dealing with a relationship that is ending, it is difficult. It is painful. And, and unfortunately, we usually see the worst version of ourselves. And that's what's hard. Because for your children, you need to fight to show up and be the best version of yourselves. So that's going to have to sink in. And you're going to have to think about what you say before you say it to one another. And know that every foul word, every argument, every nitpick, everything you think you're doing to the other person, you have to imagine that you're also doing that to your kids. All right? Yes, we have counseling and resources for you. I wish you all the very best and take care of this beautiful little boy. Court is adjourned. Thank you.